Hey, what's up? This is MarketAlchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, we're going to take a look at Wallaby, which is a tool for testing front ends. And there is a Wallaby EX, which is an Elixir library that lets you do that. As you can see from this little example, it's a pretty nice syntax. You can just uh, take your session and then say what route you want to visit and then you can fill in text fields, you can click buttons, and then you can look for uh, various elements using a similar syntax to jQuery with this uh, you know, dot alert to get something with a class alert and pound signs work as IDs and all the stuff that we're used to. So I've just created a new Phoenix app. You can see I used mixphoenix.new Wally, calling the app Wally. So we'll go into that directory. And we'll make our database, ecto.create. And we're not going to start the server yet. Once the database is made, the first step we need is to install phantom.js. That's because Wallaby is a front end testing tool and it requires phantom. We'll do mix, or actually, it's not mix, we'll do npm install g phantom.js. I've already got it, so this will be basically instantaneous for me or it should have been, I guess NPM is still going to do a bit of stuff. Once that is, uh, is set up, I'm just going to close that terminal here. Once that's set up, the next thing we need to do is add Wallaby to our dependencies. I'm actually going to bump this Elixir version up to 1.9, because 1.5 is a little bit old. I'll add the library. Actually, let's bump up the font size so you can see what I'm doing. We'll add the library Wallaby and it's not being updated that often so if you look at the docs for wallaby you may see some things assuming we're dealing with phoenix 1.3 i believe the newest version of wallaby at the time of this recording is 0.23 and we've got to set a couple of options on that as well those would be runtime false and only test so that wallaby is only included when we're in mix environment of test. Now that that's set up, let's open up our config for test. I'm going to make a few changes in here as well. First is we've got to set server to true because when we run our tests with Wallaby, they're integration tests and we need to be running the web server and actually be generating all that HTML. Then we need to set something on our app as well. And that's going to be config. Our app name is Wally. So config Wally. SQL sandbox is true. And this SQL sandbox is so that we can run multiple tests at the same time. We can spin up multiple browsers and uh, it'll finish our tests faster. The other thing that's interesting with Wallaby is since we can run multiple browsers at once, we can actually have uh, multiple actions being taken on the same page or on the same data and make complex tests that we're not going to get into today. And the other thing we're going to set is we're going to make Wallaby take screenshots whenever there's a failure. So Wallaby screenshot on failure is going to be true. Okay, with that set, there's one more thing we need to do for this. Actually, a few things we need to do, but one thing we need to do in order to use this SQL sandbox is we've got to add that to our endpoint.ex. So let's go there now, endpoint.ex. Before any other plugs, we'll check to see if our application environment has that SQL sandbox that we set in the test config. So that'll be get env wally and SQL sandbox and if that is set then what we'll do is we'll add one more plug for phoenix.ecto.sql.sandbox and what that'll do is every single time we hit the endpoint which is basically any time we hit any route on our app whatsoever we're going to be running through this ecto.sql.sandbox plug and we'll be using that in our test helper. So our test helper starts with these uh, two things by default, the X unit start, and then this sandbox mode for the Wally repo. 
we're going to make sure that everything has started, or we're going to make sure that everything has already been started before we run Wallaby. So, okay, and we're not even going to use that. Equals application dot ensure all started Wallaby. And then we're going to add the base URL for our application to the environment for Wallaby. So application dot put env Wallaby and base URL. I believe that has an underscore. And our base URL we can grab from the endpoint. So that's wallyweb.endpoint.url. It's a function that'll return it. Now we've got a test helper. Next thing we need to do is make another support case. So you can see we've got a, a channel case, we've got con case, and we've also got a data case. Of all of these, I think the con case is the simplest. So we're just going to copy this entire file and make a new one that's called uh, integration case ex copy paste that whole thing in we'll change the docs let's see this module defines a test case to use by integration tests and instead of wally web con case this will be wally web integration case and we're going to use x unit case template this we'll get rid of so this first thing our case template's going to do is we're going to use a macro. That's when you see this using do and quote do basically means any file that, or any module that uses this module is just going to inject all the code we put between this quote do and this end into that module as if we had written it right there. First thing we'll do is call another macro, use, uh, use wallaby.dsl. This pulls in a bunch of things that, that uh, exist in the DSL. So um, all those, those helpers we're using in order to do the various tests. And we also want to alias wally.repo so that inside any of our integration tests, we can just type repo instead of wally.repo every time. Then we'll import ecto and we'll import ecto dot change set and ecto dot query. So all of our tasks will also be able to use anything that's inside of change set or query. Finally, we'll grab the router helpers. So wallyweb dot router dot helpers. These setup tags are basically fine. We're going to be checking out the Wally repo in the sandbox. And unless it's async, we'll be sharing everything in the sandbox. Okay, so that's the same. This is not a con case though. This is our integration case. So we're not going to be doing this line here. Instead, we'll be starting a Wallaby session. So okay, and session is going to equal Wallaby dot start session and we've got to pass that session some metadata which we haven't gotten yet so we'll grab that in a second metadata and that metadata is going to be coming out of that sandbox that we set up so it's going to be phoenix dot ecto dot sql dot sandbox dot metadata for wally.repo and self. Okay, so we've got the metadata. We pass that metadata to wallaby.start session, which starts a session and then returns that in an okay tuple. Then we're gonna use that session or we're actually going to pass that session along to our tests. So session and session. What this will do is every single test that we run that uses this integration case we'll have a session available to it in its context. Okay, with that setup, we should be able to actually create an integration test. So let's go over to the side panel and go to test Wally web. We'll add a new directory, which will be for integration, integration. And in that directory, we'll make a new test. 
We don't really have anything in this app, so we'll just test the index page. So index page test.exs. We'll make a new module for that. And it's going to be Wally Web dot integration. No, index page test. And we're going to use Wally Web dot integration case integration case and it will be asynchronous remember this use is the same thing as if we had just typed all of this right here into the top of the integration page test module and of course this use is injecting even more into it all of this is done at compile time though so there's no uh, there's no real overhead to it it's just a a costless abstraction. We do need one more import though, and that's going to be wallaby.query, which is actually a fairly extensive library. We're just going to grab CSS, so only CSS, and it's a two argument function. Um, that CSS is what I just showed you a little bit ago in the examples where we could use that jQuery-like syntax to uh, query whatever we wanted. Now we'll do a test. What can we test on the index page? Uh, it should have that big hero section. So it has a huge hero section. We're not actually going to test the size of the hero section, but we'll test that it's there. And this session here is passed to us from the integration case. So that session is everything set up with our, our new Wallaby session that we started. And inside our test let's just make it really simple for now actually let's just have it empty and make sure that that runs properly mix test uh, we still need to get our dependencies so mix depths dot get should be pretty quick since that one's just going to be wallaby and then mix ecto dot create since it may not have even made the database yet and now we'll mix test looks good and we're not using that import yet because we haven't uh, we haven't done anything in the test so the way this works is we just take our session and we pass a visit to it we can put any route we want in our app it could be like users or it could be user slash four in this case we're just going to go to the uh, base url of the app we'll use find with that css function we've pulled in Inside this string is like a CSS selector, like a jQuery kind of selector. So if we had .foo, that would be class foo. If we had pound foo, that would be id foo. We're just going to find sections, though, because uh, I don't remember what class is on them, to be honest. And we expect there will be, I think it was two or three. I think it's three of those sections. And let's try running that and while that's running we will okay all is good so there are three sections if we had said two sections so i'll show you that error really quickly then we would have uh basically we'd say we're expecting a bigger count than we found um, so yeah here we go here's the error section count two but there were actually three visible elements found not two so set that to three I think the second one is the one that has the hero section in it. So do enum.at to get the second element out of those three sections in the list. Uh, it, since it's zero index, that's going to be enum.at1 will get us the second one. And then we assert has. We can use the same CSS again. So CSS. What's going to be inside the section? Well, we're going to have an H1 inside the section. And we can pass text to it that we expect it to have. Uh, that H1 should say, welcome to Phoenix, with an exclamation point. We'll just write welcome right here. Save that and run our test. That works. Now, this isn't really the best way to do the test, because we're finding all these sections and we're relying on the number of them. I think the first one is a header, and then the second section is uh, is the big hero. And if we had a third section that we added above the hero, 
this test would break. So let's take a look at the file itself. So that would be in the template index.html or page. Okay. So we can see two sections in this file. The first of the three sections actually comes from the, the header navigator, but this one, the one that we want, has a class of phx-hero. So let's copy that, and then we can use that class to find the section. So instead of find CSS any section, we'll just find the one with the class phoenix-hero, and there should just be one of them. So we're not gonna have a list, we're gonna have a single element. We'll get rid of that enum.at, and we'll assert the same things. Okay, that's good. Now let's just change one more thing. It says welcome to Phoenix on the page. Welcome will match. Welcome to Phoenix will match. What if we write welcome to Arizona? Well, that's not going to match and we'll get a failure. It'll tell us what's wrong. And because we've got that option of screenshot on failure true, we'll actually see a screenshot that shows us what happened when the test failed. So you can see we got a failure. We, we did find NH1, but it didn't match the text we were looking for. And it's got a screenshot. And we can see how it would have looked on mobile. Welcome to Phoenix. And it's pretty obvious what our problem was. So that's just how to get started with Wallaby. This is obviously there are a lot of things you can do with Wallaby, but once you get it set up and you can start messing around with it, I think you should be able to figure out what's going on pretty quickly. And we'll be using these features along with others to test the Phoenix View Trello clone in the series that is ongoing right now. Hope you found this useful. If you did, click subscribe and you'll get more like it. See you next time.